We have been so lucky with weather in America recently. This is the first truly miserable day. Hello one and all and welcome to Seen Through Glass. Welcome to Montreal, Canada. Maybe it's the fact that we are in Canada still that the weather has got worse because it's October. And I think winter in Canada can be pretty grim at times. Uh, anyway, you may have noticed, I'm not in my Porsche 911 Carrera T. I'm in an F-Type. Uh, Long-term views of the channel. Well, well, maybe you'd like to reminisce with me or hark back to the glory days when I owned my F-Type R. I have always loved these things. And unbelievably, here in Montreal, uh, I'm staying at an Airbnb that has partnered up with a supercar rental company, which means when you book your Airbnb, you can book a cool car like this F-Type SVR. Uh, full disclosure, the guys have invited me to stay for free, which is absolutely amazing because Money is exceptionally tight these days on Drive the World, so any help we can get is appreciated. Anyway, I think for now, let's do the... Uh, actually, you know what? I didn't want to rush this. I mustn't forget the key to starting any F-Type is going into dynamic mode first, because this is, a, this is going to be a cold start. <laughs> oh, I love these things so much. Anyway, uh, we're actually leaving Montreal, <laughs> and I'm headed to Ottawa, to meet up with the OB Prestige guys. But right now, putting the heated seat on, gonna get used to being back in an F-Type and make our way two hours outside of town in this horrible weather. And I'll catch up with you guys, I assume, just outside Ottawa. Somehow we survived that journey. That was pretty terrifying. I feel like that really was the first proper storm of North America that we've experienced. But we have now made it to OB Prestige and the sort of rain and wind has subdued ever so slightly but apparently it is following us up the road so I've got to be quick with anything I'm doing here. Now I feel like most of you will know this space because of their exotic or luxury or kind of insane hypercars and supercars that they often post about. However, there are a couple of cars that I want to learn more about before we come out and experience all of this. So yes, do not worry. Those of you that are spying things behind me go, ah, you've got to go film that. I will go and film that. But first off, we're heading to the shop in the back to, yes, learn about two cars that just kind of blow my mind. I don't quite understand how they've been created and that's what we're going to find out. Maximum boost on Don't Blink, we have 2,500 horsepower, and on the GTR, we have roughly 3,300 crank horsepower. So, rough. It's, that's a lot of power to handle, yes. Uh, we'll get to the in and out of what makes this car so powerful and so fast. So, uh, OB, uh, when he started racing, he started racing. A bit of like gentleman racing with uh, like road racing, circuit racing, and then the most professional thing that he started with was half mile racing. And this was his first half mile car that he actually built professionally to go uh, race in the U United States. Okay, so I, this I, I don't called, feel like yeah. too many people take Lamborghinis for like their first yeah. half mile car. And especially right? twin turbo it and take a 2012 Super Trofeo Stradal. Which is where, now one of the most like collectible Gallardos you can buy. Exactly, right. So um, he named this Don't Blink, we wrapped it in chrome red. And uh, we dealt with a company based out of Sarasota called Hefner Performance. Uh, Jason Hefner, who we know well and we've worked with for many, many years, is a leader when it comes to Lamborghinis and twin turboing. He's done a lot of Vipers, Mustangs, and then now uh, Ford GTs and now Lamborghinis. And uh, we started this project in 2014, 15. Um, and like any race car, uh, it's never done. You're always trying to go faster. You're always trying to improve. So the car started out with 1,000, 1,200 horsepower, and now we're obviously double that. So very, very close to 2,500 horsepower, running 50 to 55 PSI a boost on the <laughs> on. twin precision uh, 82, 85 turbos. 
So uh, is it hard to achieve those kind of numbers in a Gallardo though? Like, how many times did you have to trial things and they go wrong? I've or? personally split a lot of 5.2 liter blocks in half, <laughs> um, and if you're the leader at the race and you're the one that has the fastest mile an hour or the most HP, you're the one doing all the research and development because you're going to find all the weak spots. So I would say anywhere close to 2,000 to 2,500 horsepower, depending on the type of original cast block that you have from a 5.2. Uh, some of them are a bit weaker than others depending on the casting, but you can make that power. Now we're moving on to the billet uh, blocks. So uh, Hefner Performance has designed a complete billet block for these cars that mm -hmm. we're doing in another Lamborghini that we have, which unfortunately is not here, it's at a shop being built. <laughs> so uh, that car is gonna be making same amount of HP, but reliable you know okay. don't have to worry that in sixth gear at 230 miles an hour the engine just grenades itself and you got to figure out that. you know that's not what you're going for i guess no. with cooler model racing. <laughs> what's cool about it is that when you're in the car in the rearview mirror you see the engine so when you see the explosion i would say for that split second you're like whoa 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 that's awesome <laughs> so this is a, a custom deck lid that was made for this car and originally the Gallardo has a level deck lid. In this case, uh, you can see the drivetrain is taking up a lot more room than on any standard Gallardo. So uh, the big thing about this car, when Jason built it, we've had intercoolers that were separate from the intake manifold, but we went, uh, he basically designed and machined this all in-house with his five, uh, five axis CNC, the inner cooler core is actually built into the intake manifold. So the only piping you have is roughly a foot and a half of piping from these turbos straight into the intake manifold that incorporates the inner cooler. We see this in some factory cars, you know, whether they're German or domestic or, so this technology is there, but uh, it definitely helps with servicing, keeping everything short and sweet. And uh, when it comes to power like this, you know, eventually room and, and, and heat become a problem. So trying to really uh, make it as, as you know, uh, efficient as possible is what we're trying to do here. Trying to keep the heat away from the engine when, uh, when it comes to exhaust. We and this was, a, this was a record car, this was a world record car. Right? Yeah, so uh, it was holding the record when we were doing 230, 233 miles an hour. This was three years ago. Ever since then, we've been doing a lot of local stuff. But um, I'd say that now the world record is close to 260 miles an hour. Uh, I think the quarter mile stuff gives, you know, it's a bit safer, uh, it's funner in a sense. Uh, you race an opponent. Okay, well, talking about racing. Yeah. Let's move on to this. This is Alpha Queen. This is our first fully built quarter mile car. Uh, it's a 2009 GTR that's built by AMS Performance that's based out of Chicago. And when OB wanted to do a quarter mile car, he was racing with his buddy um, uh, Giddy, Gideon, who also had a GTR built by AMS. They got to talking and this car basically became, became a huge project for AMS, for us, for the racing team in general. We started originally with 2,000 HP and have crept up to the 3,000 horsepower mark. So to see that up front here, that's where you get to appreciate the Garrett GTX turbos, 80 millimeter inducer, so on the Lambos, we're anywhere between 50 and 55 PSI. On these cars, we're anywhere between 80 and 85 PSI. Oh my God. So, so everything's out front, because you've got turbos, you've even got exhaust. Exhaust, yeah. In so, front of the front wheels. So why this oh thing actually God. makes 3,000 wheel HP. Whoa. So that's actually a 4.3 liter billet block, the Alpha Performance uh, AMS built uh, billet block. That's the only reason why it could handle 3,300 horsepower at 80 to 85 PSI, which I've already had uh, the opportunity to try. It still blows me away every time we drive this car, just how powerful and raw it is. There's no time to think, there's only time to react. Sure. And that's when 
when, when driving a car like that becomes that much more serious, you just have to keep the car in a straight line. Yeah, oh, unreal. Well, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for, for talking me through these things because, no yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. So, yeah, yeah. mate, appreciate it massively. Oh, it Thank you so much. <laughs> And then you, we still have the factory ignition key that will cycle Just one? To, the, to two. And then we one. let the car wake up. That pump you're hearing is an air pump that builds pressure because the transmission is a Hollinger sequential air shifted transmission. So no more of the uh, of the E gear, the factory E gear. Okay, because I've, I've got a clutch pedal. You have a clutch pedal, yeah, okay. absolutely. I'm gonna be honest, I was I was nervous with the Gallardo. I'm absolutely poutining myself about getting in this. So yeah, wish me luck. This one here. And you just literally clip it in, push in, it's gonna lock by itself. It's gonna lock, yeah. I have to pull anything? Yeah, just push it, jiggle it, it should. Eventually. Yeah, just get the angle, there there, voila. Okay. Just, just, yeah, so you feel the, the column good. right there. Uh, in this car, Obviously the steering wheel, we have a couple of buttons here. When we want to do the burnout, when we want to do the rolling anti-lag, when we want to open the chute. Sure. Um, to start the car, very, very basic. Foot on the brake, slap the, the, press the button and the car is going to start. The kill switch in this car is actually outside. There's so much fuel demand from this car. This car uses 18 injectors, it's a six cylinder. So there's three injectors <laughs> per, cylinder, per cylinder and it runs M5 methanol. And the stoichiometric ratio for any car running pump gas is 14.7 to 1. This car is like 6.8 to 1. So that's a lot of fuel going wow. inside the engine. Kind of plug your ears. Should I put earplugs in? And hold in? your breath because uh, methanol is very, very toxic. So <laughs> What are we doing? Yeah. We're doing this inside. Yeah. And I'm just going to let, let this one run? Yeah, I just yeah. let it run. Yeah, totally. Honestly, he's putting <laughs> earplugs in. No, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. You you'll sure? be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's part of the experience. Yeah, I've heard it before, you haven't. Okay, yeah. right, foot on the brake. How oh crazy is that? God. Yeah, oh now you my see the God. spitting out. And my whole head vibrated. We, we build roughly like 30 PSI of boost right before the launch with that. You know, then, I, was, I was standing right there to film and when you did that first one, I'm like, I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> if, he comes, if he comes yeah, towards yeah, yeah, yeah. me. It's, oh, it's a train. This is yeah. a train. It's, it's phenomenal what kind of power you can get from 4.3 liters. I don't know if you yeah. like that, but my ear hurts. Uh, oh, yeah, literally hurts. Right now. I don't know if it's the hurts. ringing from the carbon monoxide or... Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, I no. think the thing that separates this car from other cars to me is, is this. It's yep. like other cars can be loud, hurt your ears, make you plug your ears, but this moves you. Like, yeah. It's it's out. in it's inside the chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you so much for, I guess, demonstrating that. But, uh, yeah. dude, honestly, <laughs> no problem. Here, it's I a appreciate pleasure. it. Yeah. <laughs> Back now into the showroom, and because this is an active dealership and showroom, other people are here, so my inside voice is making a return to the channel. Unfortunately, Obi himself not here at the moment, so let's take myself for a walk around, see what is lying here, because there's some pretty special cars. Some of these are part of the private collection as well, so not all of them are for sale, but I'll try and point those out to you as we move around.
flying mirror testarossa. These are super rare with, as you say, that single mirror kind of flying in the air off the windscreen there. F12 TDF with a kind of like matching interior exterior spec. Do you see what I mean there? You've got the sort of white seats with the Italian stripe and then on the outside we've got white with the Italian stripe as well. So kind of like that. Apparently this was a kind of a limited run heritage spec that was offered in the Bianco Fuji, which is the kind of pearl white. This was a special edition for the 2014 Formula One World Championship. Uh, it wasn't much more apart from some paint, uh, but it's pretty cool to see anyway and a bit of a a bit of a collector's item for those F1 aficionados. Uh, SLS Black Series, very nice in red. Spinning around into the center of the room because this is kind of where some of the big hitters are lurking. And we'll kick things off with a McLaren Senna. Now, obviously, I filmed quite a few Senna's this year. Each one is individual as the one before it. Um, and this is no different. Uh, we've got a, it is a black car, but uh, as always with McLaren, it's all in the fleck, all in the spec. And I don't know if you can really see, it's not really showing up inside, but there are lime green flecks in that black paint to sort of tie into these lime green stripes and details around the car. The other thing you might notice is the purple details on the aero flaps at the front, just on that sort of front splitter and on the brake calipers. But more impressively, inside, where pretty much all the interior carbon is purple. Absolutely outrageous how much, or up to the, to the extent that they've gone to with that coloured carbon. So yeah, quirky, weird. I mean, the car is weird enough looking anyway. Why not go mad on the spec? So we'll give that one a thumbs up. Now, usually there'd be two Paganis here, but that's why Obi's not here because he's doing the Pagani Raduno down towards Atlanta. So unfortunately, they're not here at the moment, but this I think makes up for it because yes, Koenigsegg, Agera RS, without a stripe, very rare to see, white with red carbon everywhere. And this is apparently one of just seven cars that has sort of, uh, I think it's called the megawatt upgrade or package upgrade just a little bit more power in a car that really didn't need it but um still unbelievably cool to see um right next to that a car that i would take over in a flash it's a ferrari f40 so yes i would pick that over that um slightly odd seats going on in the f40 though i um, don't know if they're like temporary or if they've got covers on or what but just look a little bit off off to me but maybe i'm mistaken um anyway beautiful to see i got distracted there for a second apologies uh finally in this kind of row we've got the aventador svj running on some slightly modified wheels that actually i think kind of work for it this is that i think special edition 63 thing i i, I really don't pay much attention to lamborghinis i'm sorry uh, for those lambo fans but i know that this is a an even more special or rare edition of the svj and then we've got a gt3 GT3 RS, a nice Targa, a beautiful Dodge Viper in green, uh, and then a C63 S. Ooh, and that is pretty much the full walk around of the cars here in the kind of showroom. I did miss a couple, so apologies there. Hopefully you saw them in some other clips, but yeah, I was running out of breath and I was just, I need a bit of a drink because I was just seemed to go on forever, these cars. And such variety from things like, flying mirror testarossas through to Koenigseggs. There's kind of like a car to tick every car guy's passion here. Whatever you're into, this is something uh, that you might like to find. But yeah, for me, those big horsepower, the Gallardos, the GTRs, these kind of drag cars, just blow my mind. The fact that someone would take a car like this and re-engineer it, be able to re-engineer it, to produce such power. I think most of you know that First Point do my car insurance back in Europe, but they also do my medical insurance. <laughs> I think I'm going to need to call them after that experience. Wow. A proper full-on drag car. Possibly the loudest thing I've ever heard. Um, awesome experience. Uh, a shame again that Obi wasn't here today. It would have been great to, uh, to have met him and, and hung out with him, but the team here looked after me beautifully and I feel like we still had an awesome day despite the rain as well. I kind of forgot the end of the world storm that we were in this morning. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. Give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure you subscribe for plenty more videos to come.